A mistake people make all the time is they don't plan their backs around the backs of their enemies. They don't plan their wave manipulation with their opponent in mind. And they give up so much random gold. And this matchup is so... This, this matchup is so nice for for Akali, the Trendomir matchup. Yeah, the matchup is very forgiving for Akali. You can W when he E's in. Oh, yeah, I know. And, and you can punish him with your extra range compared to him. And I also know Trendomir's weak with a Fury, so that's why I'm trading aggressively here. Hmm. much. That ward needs to be deeper. I mean, the word needs to be deeper, but alternatively, I can say I don't think you should have warded in that timing because you gave him time to build Fury. And if you were being, if you get ganked by Gragas, like, I don't think your response changes with the depth of the word you can place there without missing farm. And also, because look where the wave gets caught, right? Yeah, it's in such a spot. I needed to, I needed to shove it and not ward them. This is tragic. I'm like, please. I'm like, all right, guess I'm going for the 2v1. And then I'm like, oh, I'll get revealed. Let me show you something. Yeah. Instead of turning around like this, you should shroud right here. Uh-huh. Like, just QW. Have the shroud be right here. Yeah. Then, if you have it up here, you can maybe get to the bushes and play with the alcove with your E. Yeah. Or your flash. Like, if you can play with this area, you might be able to get out of this. Yeah. But because you kite down into this area, there's no way you're getting out. So it's a bad start. Now, this is the ideal wave position. You want to keep it coming into you as long as you can. Because he still can't walk up to you for trades. And if the wave is coming into you, and you can deny the fury at the same time, like, this was a really bad kill. I know you're thinking, like, oh, he has double buffs. You didn't walk quite far enough forward for that one, then this one, you last hitting with it, but you should be walking forward and then using it both times. Because every bit of damage you get on him is useful because you can potentially threaten lethal just because of the champion matchup. Yes, you won't necessarily beat him right now, but just that little bit of damage adds up over time. And if you waste E, you just have to E. Oh, this shroud was bad. I was so sad on that shroud. Yeah, it needs to be up here. Then you didn't get the walk. Rip. Either way, though, you almost win the trade, even with the mistakes, because of the champions. Yeah. And the thing is that you poked him a bit beforehand. You got that shroud in a better position. Maybe you can just chase down and kill. And get those double buffs for yourself. You have one word up. A Q, a Q, rip. So, you get him this low with missing two Qs. Yeah, if I hit that, yeah. Try to aim your Qs. Okay, imagine that I'm playing Akali right now. When I flick my mouse and I'm trying to poke him, what most people do is they move their mouse here when they're trying to use it, right? Think about this. Most people will aim somewhere on the upper body, but that's wrong. That leads you to missing so many skill shots. Where you should be aiming is actually right here. In League of Legends, we're in an isometric view, and the hitbox is actually centered around the base of champions' models. The highest chance of hitting an ability is the base of the hitbox, and the base of the hitbox in League is always in the base of the champion. Make sense? Oh, that makes, that makes perfect sense. Could still be cleaner. You use the E and then you instantly cancel the E with R. Yeah. I mean, actually fine. I, I like to see that because you didn't give the E a chance to get you as far out of range. The shroud, I really hate this though. Your shroud positioning needs work. <laughs> Looking at it now, I'm like, why am I shrouding? What are you afraid of? There's nothing to be afraid of. I think if he ults, he might actually kill you here because you don't have Shroud. I'm going to be completely honest. Because then he just turns and autos me. Okay, you would have had to flash away. But I think you would have lived. But you wouldn't have killed him regardless. And that's because of the Shroud use. We're like, it's not a problem here, but it would be a problem against... He was better, if he was better, like, and, and like, like, let's say, a, like, a Diamond 3 Trinomir, right? Like, yeah. 
That was again the same thing. I could actually see it. The... Where I keep aiming for the head? Yeah, it's instinctive to people to aim for the body or the head. Like, look. Your Q is on the upper half of him, see? Yeah. But it's so easy to just aim for the lower half. But the actual thing is, like, think about this. In a shooter game, you would be 100% right to aim for the body or the head. Passive use. Fine. Now what sucks is Trainer Marine gets a lot of turret plates though, which is kind of tragic, but you did get more gold than Trin did there, just to tell you. Trin has 300 gold deficit on you. It's because this, the three tower plates he just took, that's worth 360 gold. Tower plates are not worth as much as the kills because you got two kills from that. So if you take three plates, it's equal a kill, but then you've got two kill, not one. And I also prevented him from doing Infernal. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely, don't get me wrong, it sucks that he got the plates, but that was worth it for you. Yeah. And then he just trolls because he tries to fight a Gunblade Akali without ult up. And, it's just, and at this point, I'm like, cool, the game's in my hand. Like, I'm ready. Yeah. Mistake is actually back here. When you kill this plate, you back. And actually, you don't even kill this plate. What you do is you push this. You walk up. You should auto the tower. Let's see. Three times. One. Two. Right? Three. And then recall right there. Recall right here. In place. If you auto right here, right? Or one more auto, so it was four auto. Then you recall, right? The minions will get the tower down to the plate. And if you recall in place, no one's going to cancel you anyway. And you have the wave here. That way you get the gold while you're recalling. And that way you get the recall off sooner. So 1322 is when your recall starts. It will finish at 1330. Just keep this in mind. In base already at 1330, you have a 120 less gold. What does this 120 gold that you got give you? Let's see. You would have 1600 instead of 1720. Or you would have 1500, sorry, because of the minions. What do we buy? Haunting guys. But you still have 240 gold, right? 200 gold, so it doesn't matter. That so you had no use for this extra gold. What time do we get to base? 1403. How long does it take to go from base to top lane with boots on? Imagine this, 1330? It would be around 14, right? It's 30 seconds to the top tower, 37 seconds to here, 35 seconds, actually, to go to the lane with boot. But it would only be 28 seconds to get to the tower. And that's what's relevant to stop him from taking tower, right? I would have prevented Trinomir from getting first. So imagine this, you'd add 1358 if you bought instantly. So let's say 14. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. You'd be getting to the tower to prevent it. But guess what? Where is Trind at 1407? He's here. So you'd be getting here when Trind is here. Right? So Trind is here, and you're up here at that timing. You see that? Yeah. So a mistake people make all the time is they don't plan their backs around the backs of their enemies. They don't plan their wave manipulation with their opponent in mind. And they give up so much random gold to completely preventable things because they don't think it out. And I didn't think it out. So like here, you got an extra 200 gold, had a buy that didn't matter for you because you wouldn't have spent this extra amount of gold anyway on this item. And you lose a bit of a wave and you lose your first tower bonus gold. And honestly, can you tell me that you wouldn't have taken first tower if you just kept laning against him normally? I definitely would have gotten first because I would have chunked him out and I like I mean I've already I've already done it before right I've yeah of course you've already killed him multiple times so you just shut down a bit of your snowball for no reason yeah and I slowed the game down in a game that's you know very I mean look at their gold lead like it, it's only the kills are even but the gold lead is yeah it's 2k because look at the farm differential on bot lane and mid lane like I can't afford like in this game where it's like the game's in my hands like I can't afford to be given over free gold and it's like, you're still ahead, and you're still doing the best on your team. It's just, let's say Trind might have 
5,000 gold right now instead, and you might have 6,900 when you take this tower. This is so troll. I think this is really stupid. This is so troll. Oh my god. This is the most dumb thing. Like, this is like, that's game. That, you could pause the VOD right there and say you lose the game off that. I lose the game 100% off that play. There's a few things. Do not start an engagement on Akali like this. Like, pretty much ever. This only works when you're trying to pick an AD carry or like a mid laner and only when you're really far ahead. So, the second thing, you land the Q. And then you just walk in a straight line at him. Instead of walking backwards and then forward, right? So we don't get this passive proc until out here, so we're missing one extra Q auto that we could have potentially had. Because you get a speed buff every time you do this. And then, like, there's no point to this. It, it's so bad. Look at the shutdown gold. Look at that 500 gold. Trainer's like, give me that money. And this is the sort of thing where, you know, this can work, but only if you approach it from the lane and you get one Q auto before you start the ult. You can get him a tiny bit lower. You know the difference of that working or not is that extra two seconds of having an extra 200 damage on him at the start of it. I mean, it made no sense. There was no reason to go for that. It would be better to shove out the wave and try to rotate. Instead of this, what do we have on the map? We have a mid tower that's full. We have a bot tower that's full. We have ult right now. And Trind isn't going to get to anything for a long time. So if instead of walking here, you come here, you shove this wave, he's not going to contest you shoving this. You get this wave to tower, so he has to deal with this wave, he has to deal with another wave that will be here, and another wave that will be here before he gets to your tower. But you could just recall, go bot lane, and try something on these guys. You have the vision control in the river here. If you can just walk here, like the only thing the enemy team can do right now to try to win is through bot lane, right? So why are we trying to still play through top lane? It's diminishing returns. And these guys have no mobility, really, so if you were to come bot, it's so easy for you to kill them, Azukale. I mean, I came I came bot once, and I got, like, two free kills. Mm-hmm. Tunnel vision. I think it's just tunnel vision. And at this point, you have to answer the waves, so suddenly you don't have a way to rotate. You can't rotate now. And if you TP'd, you don't have ult up, because you burned it in top lane. I'm to hope for some random team fight win. I'm not in the driver's seat anymore. Yeah, yeah, this is the 20-minute like NA feels bad man where it's like we've all been in this spot where it's like you, you could have had the game by the ball but now it's like all right coin flip time boys let's see what happens time to a ram it down so let's go through this step by step anything i would say when you're chasing this you needed to use your e and then immediately use your r2 to break it so that you'd have a mark on your shroud so, the exact angles you want it to take. Right here. You want to E right now. E this way. And then just get the auto instantly and the Q. Right? And then when he uses the casket, you want to R2 past him. And then you follow your E back here because he's going to be dead pretty much. It's E this way. Like, um... Unai will mark this spot to come back, right? Then you get the auto here on Gragas. You get the next Q, and then you do the R2 through him this way when he when he uses the casket, the R of Gragas. This is definitely a case where there's no reason that we don't kill him. And I know like killing him isn't it's not game winning, so to say, at all. Just um every extra kill you guys get. Every death that you guys don't get is a potential for you to randomly win the game. The thing I'm always saying in low elo, people throw so often that it's kind of just ingrained. And when you see someone start throwing, like when you see like multiple kills in a row, like five minutes in a row, your team is just dying instead of taking objectives. You kind of feel like you're going to lose and it sets the mindset of everyone in the game. What issues do we have? We have mechanics issues. We have issues with... Knowing when to rotate. Back timing's definitely a thing. Less on wave control. 